So this is uh, how the uh, thing is set up. You see the figure here and the question says the train cars are coupled together. Okay, that's an important piece of information by being bumped into one another. Suppose two loaded train cars are moving toward one another. First having, oh, they have different mass. Okay, um, so this is my mass M1 and a velocity of V1 and the second having a mass of M2 and a velocity of, um, let me break from my tradition here and use this quantity with negative sign as my V2. What is their final velocity? V final. Okay. So as you are reading this question, um, if we are new at questions of this type, it might seem like they didn't give you enough information. Because um, in chapter nine, we are using, we are answering a lot of questions using conservation law. So you are trying to use conservation law strategy. And the very first step, maybe step number zero for conservation law strategy is identifying conserved quantity. And in this question, they are not telling you um, what's conserved. Uh, so it's up to you to figure out what is conserved and what is not. Um, the, the first quantity that's uh, easier to identify as being conserved is momentum. If, so in this question, even though nowhere, anywhere ever says anything about momentum, it's uh, quite common in a collision situation for momentum to be conserved. The primary thing you should identify is, um, are there any significant large external forces? And, um, and you know, the question didn't have to specify it's frictionless or anything like that, because when something involves a collision, those collision forces tend to be pretty large. And whatever friction is probably going to be negligible. So usually what you're watching out for is things like a collision into a wall, that normal force between wall and the colliding object, those are pretty significant. And um, those are the kind of force that you can neglect by making the time interval much shorter because the way those normal forces work, the shorter you make the time interval, the larger the force is so that the impulse delivered doesn't change. So. So, you know, but you know, here nothing's colliding into wall. Both of the objects, M1 and M2, that, um, that you are, that are interacting, they are part of your system. So any force between those two trains is, uh, it's internal force and internal forces will conserve total momentum. So that's one. And the other quantity, other conserved quantity you've seen so far, mechanical energy. The question doesn't, say anything about whether mechanical energy is conserved. And my own preference in situation like this would be to simply say nothing. So maybe it'll turn out that energy is conserved, but if it somehow turns out that energy uh, won't be conserved, conserved, whatever way, uh, just to make no statement regarding energy. And hopefully we can still solve the question without needing to make a statement about energy. And this is where this statement coupled together is important. That's actually giving you a really important piece of information that allows you to answer this question just to using conservation of momentum and, um, and this a uh, kinematical fact that after these two um, two uh, trains collide, they are stuck together, so they will be moving as one body. And uh, let me keep you the convention that I picked for this uh, V2. Uh, let's say they will be moving with some final velocity that will be common to both of them. And as you write down your conservation law equation, you will see that, oh, that does give us the information we need. So, so let me do that. Um, so we've identified the, conserva uh, the momentum as the conserved quantity. So let me write down conservation of momentum equation. Conservation of momentum says that total momentum before collision is equal to the 
total momentum after the collision. It conserved, doesn't change. The momentum before the collision, so I need to write down the expression for momentum of each of the train and add them together. So I have M1, V1, momentum of the first train, plus M2, V2, momentum of the second train. And when I plug in V2, I'm going to plug in this minus sign. That's why I'm writing this vector symbol to remind myself, oh, these are signed quantities. I have to pay attention to their sign as I'm plugging in numbers. So that's going to be equal to the momentum after. So here I'm going to treat this as a single object having mass M1 plus M2. M1 plus M2, moving with some common final velocity, V final. And as you look at this expression, I hope you see that you have one unknown, uh, V final. One unknown, one equation, you can solve for it, no problem at all. In fact, this is a pretty easy equation to solve, so let me do that. My V final, um, the yeah, V final as a vector quantity, will be the left-hand side, which is the sum of vectors, <laughs> M1, V1, plus M2, V2, divided by the total mass, M1 plus M2. And this is one of those things where, oh, I have all the numbers to plug in, so let me do that. Um, so my masses are M1, uh, 2 times 10 to the power of 5 kilogram, um, times the velocity 0 0.3 meters per second um, plus the mass of the second train 1.15 times 10 to the power of 5 um, and my calculator does the order of uh, operation thing that's why i'm doing uh, that's why i'm not doing parentheses um, you should know how your calculator works times 0 0.12 being careful to include the minus sign um, so that's the numerator. Uh, oh, so it's going to be positive. Okay, good. Um, let me divide that by some of the masses. So that'll be, uh, I'll just do this in my head. Uh, 2 plus 1.15. So 3 times 10 to the power of 15. Sorry, 3.15 times 10 to the power of It's one of those things, um, if you are strictly following the um, Significant figure rules, um, you would round this to one so that significant figures match, but just keep three significant figures. <laughs> Don't unround un unnecessarily. So, okay, do that division. So kilograms will cancel. I'll get an answer in meters per second. So I have 0 0.147. 0 0.147 meters per second. And um, and yeah, that's it. So this second train slowed down the first train a little bit as um, it's moving to the positive x direction, but it didn't quite stop it. It, it just slowed it down a little bit from 0 0.3 to 0 0.147. So uh, I guess since I have the numbers, might as well plug it in to see if it's correct. <laughs> um, so yeah. That's it. And the other two questions that you would get here, it's uh, similar. Um, there might be some differences of direction to worry about. I think one version actually has the mass increasing. Uh, you can treat that as something colliding with the initial speed of zero. And then after collision, having sharing the common speed and moving together with the, the hopper thing. Um, so yeah, it's uh, these kind of situations are really common and uh, frankly, uh, simple to analyze. I think that's one of the reasons we like asking this uh, sticking collision kind of questions.